Well, first and foremost, we've never been asked. We've never actually been asked to, to get back together and, and do it again. So it's rude to kind of, you know, assume that we will, unless we're actually <laughs> asked by the BBC. Um, I personally think we, we quit when we did. We did 101 episodes. We did it for 10 years, and it was very much of its time. Um if they came up with a really good idea where these three women are now in their lives and it was such a good idea, yeah, of course, we'd love to get together again because we had a great time. But you've also got to be aware sometimes you've got to know when enough's enough. Mm. And I think we quit at the right time. And, and because we quit when we did, people still really love it and talk about it. And, and maybe if we'd gone on and on and but what on. what about Doreen coming in the wall pack or something? She doesn't need to say anything. <laughs> just wear a really... No, you don't like that idea? <laughs> you could. You could have Leslie just in the background. I don't know. Just walk past the window or something. She could wear one of those belt skirts again, you know, a couple of inches, and just, just mince in and mince out. You Nobody could, had noticed. Well, exactly. <laughs> Who, who's to say? Yeah, we've had one wangle Linda in a pub. Mind you, Linda don't like countryside. She never has, like, it brings her out in hives. So you won't get her up here. <laughs> When right. I said to her, you're coming up for a girly weekend, she went, no, last time I was out there, Yorkshire Ripples on the press. I think you were right there, Lynn. I think he's, I think he's put away. There you go, then. So is it true, Linda, you don't like the North? Oh. Oh, it's not the North, it's just the countryside in general. <laughs> What's just the not problem? a country person, animals and bugs and things. Yeah, there's cows going in the background. No, it was no. a lamb. Oh, was it a lamb? <laughs> it went, <laughs> <laughs> didn't moo, Lynn. I thought it said moo. No, she doesn't know the difference, you see, no, exactly. sheep or a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie, you get this. I mean, I'm doing local radio. Here I am on a farm. I'm trying to talk to you. I know this is a ridiculous life, isn't it? And of course, the last time I saw you was at the Chelsea Flower Show. Oh, was it? My yes. Goodness. Yeah, I go there every year. I love it. In fact, Pauline and I met up a few years ago at the Chelsea Flower Show. Yeah, I love Chelsea. No, I don't know why you're on a farm. Well, we're doing the programme today. I thought it'd be a... Right, this is my kind of brain. I thought, end of August, <laughs> wouldn't it be brilliant? <laughs> I know this is ridiculous. I thought the end of August wouldn't be wonderful to take the show on the road for a week. So we end up in Scarborough on Friday. We come to the farm today. Uh, tomorrow we go in, uh, to an outlet centre. Thursday we're in Halifax at Eureka. Pause down with rain all week. See, now I'd love the outlet centre. That would be my idea of heaven. Yeah, but all you the could shops shop and... in an m and anywhere, Linda. Don't be yeah, silly. Uh, <laughs> I like to see different m and She's a city girl. I am, honestly. What about you then, Leslie? Do you like coming up north? I like. I love going up north. I've just been up there with Hot Flush. I love up north. I love touring, I love travelling round, but uh, no, I love country and I love town. I'm a bit of a mixture. Linda's very much city girl. I like to hear sirens of a night. And <laughs> oh, no, yes. no. Peace I and quiet and, and cows and sheep and <laughs> one car a day. That's me. No, I like a mixture of both. I can't sleep if there's no noise, love. I don't know what's wrong with you, Linda. The only time I seem to run into you is at showbiz do's and um, those audience withs and people like that. Oh, I know. Um, you enjoy them, don't you? You love doing things like that. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Get picked up in the car. You get well fed, well watered. Now and again, you have to have, ask a question, so you're not allowed to have a glass of wine until after you've asked the yes. question. Um, but yeah, no, they're really good fun. And really I think nice all those things that. are, and I think people sometimes knock people when they become well known for going out and appearing at things like that. But I think that's all the buns. I think that why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you go and see all your friends and go and see? I sat about 10 inches from Celine Dion. Where wow. are you going to see that other than an audience with Anchi Mind? I'm Did fighting you? at Initially. the moment for an audience with Jane McDonald. What do you think? Would you turn up? Um, nah. <laughs> oh. But well, you see her every day on Loose Women. Well, no, she's finished Loose Women, didn't you hear? She's no, done the last one at the end of the series. She's no, off now. Thank just... God for that. Is she what? off on tour? Well, Linda, how dare you? The saint of Jane McDonald. What's wrong with her? Oh, it's all right. She's all right for cruises, isn't she? Cruises? She's got yeah. the voice of an angel. She's like uh, an older version of Charlotte Church or Catherine no. Jenkins. No, love. I'm no. afraid not. I'm now, now stop yeah. it. But she's you two a are being girl. very naughty. She's You're a lovely being... girl. I'm not being <laughs> naughty. I just want to listen to her. Can we talk about our DVDs? <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> no, but I, I want to. I want to talk about you, Leslie, because I always Why? tell you this. The first what? time I met you was about 15 years ago at the Theatre Royal in Nottingham, and there you were playing Miss Hannigan, and it did oh, the yeah. business for me. Uh, oh. I've told you this before. You in that frock and wig. Did well, that really turn you on? I've got to be honest with you, I've never seen anything since that's quite made me so happy. <laughs> Do you it know? wasn't even Leslie, it was Paul O'Grady who saw that night. <laughs> well, Paul O'Grady and I shared that role, and when they put the posters out, sometimes yeah. they put my head on Paul O'Grady's body <laughs> with an American's hands. It was They were black hands, somebody else's, the, Paul O'Grady's body and my head. It was absolutely bizarre. But I tell you what, I've yeah. never done anything on stage that I've loved as much as that. Dancing and singing Easy Street, yeah. I would say probably the highlight of my entire I life I went all on the stage. way to Blackpool to I see know you, you doing that. 
that. Oh, wow, you had to I go by countryside as well, didn't she? She did, she had to travel through the countryside, but she got a mask on at the time. Yeah. She was breathing oxygen through a tube. We had the delicious Sue Pollard on yesterday. She's oh. in Bradford in our area, and she's playing Miss Hannigan at the moment. I know would you, would you like to go years. back? No, I wouldn't. No? Because when we did it, we started it at the Victoria Palace, and the man who wrote it directed it, and it was a huge production. Yeah. And uh, I think it's lost some on the way. It's still fantastically successful, and Sue's a great performer, and she will be fantastic in the role. But I did it for two and a half years, mm. and I could only go back if we took the whole production and the whole crowd that we did it with. I couldn't go back without all that. So. Um, and you mentioned Paul O'Grady, Linda. I mean, one of the best bits of comedy I ever remember seeing was that skit you did with him on his, I think it was a BBC One uh, show, wasn't it, where you kind of parodied Birds of a Feather, and I believe there's a new DVD out, which we're going to get to in a minute. Um, I know you're a big fan of his, aren't you? Yeah, no, he's fantastic. He really is. And it's just really relaxing when you're on his show. Yeah. You can just sit back and relax. Quite a few times I've been on there to promote something and actually not got round to talking about what I'm on there for. <laughs> it's a bit like this show, really. It's like this show. Just... <laughs> <laughs> mm. Are you relaxed right now, the pair of you? Because yeah. I don't want to upset you. No, she's doodling. I'm I wish doodling. So I'm you're eating bored. Breakfast. Is that what that means? You're bored with me? No, you don't no. Have to I'm, doing, I'm doing Bugs Bunny face at the moment. Oh, I've just done his teeth and his whiskers. I don't know why, what that means. Maybe I'm going to It's Disneyland. because you're in the country. She can't cope. No. So it's no. a sort of outlet of her energy doing Bugs Bunny on a piece of white paper to cope with it. Listen, let's talk about Birds of a Feather because I said the same to Pauline last week. I loved it. I grew up with it. And you know, I've told you a million times, Leslie, that I just love that show. I would love yes. it being brought back. It was funny. It was for all the family. But there was an element of risqueness about it that made it kind of cheeky for the kids, which I think was why it was so popular. And now we can get it all on DVD. Well, only the first two series at the moment, but hopefully the others will follow. But it's series one and two. And if you put them all out at once, people would be so confused, they wouldn't know what to do. So it's the first two. So we let you in gradually, you see. Yeah. What about those dresses? I know we saw a flash of them on Come Dime with me, didn't we? Uh, you Leslie? saw the Like a Virgin dress. <laughs> Can I just say, I did actually get into it. Oh, did you? <laughs> but, you know, I mean, that Like a Virgin, I don't know what the name of it was, Oki Koki Karaoke. That's if right. you watch it all through, there's an immortal moment when Linda and Pauline sing I Will Survive, <laughs> which is just fantastic. And then I do Like a Virgin. And it was just... It but was I a, remember when you did Like a Virgin at the Hammersmith Palace. I thought Palais, I was being brilliant, you, you were being brilliant. We were absolutely in shock. We'd never seen her rehearse it or anything until we actually got to see her do the show. <laughs> and she was on the floor with this dress oh. with her legs in the air. Beg your managed to keep everything covered that should be. <laughs> well, only just. But the guy I put my leg round... I think turned out to be somebody quite well known. Somebody like David Grant, or I'm sure. Oh, really? Yeah, because they, they <laughs> tapped on my shoulder a few years later and said, do you remember I was your dancer that did uh, Like a Virgin with you? Um, and they were quite well known. It must have been David Grant, I can't remember. But, you know, there were some immortal episodes in that, and they're hopefully still to come on DVD. But, you know, series one and two just tell you what it's all about and tell the story. And yeah. series one, uh, episode one, went out to 13 million people. I mean, you don't get that. You don't even get that now at the height of its success, no. unless it's the World Cup. No. And as for bringing it back, I mean, we asked Pauline earlier, um, would you two be up for it, or is it, like Pauline says, the writing might not be there, oh, the audience might not be there? You can't tell until they offer it. I mean... Right. Until we saw a script or whatever, you'd know straight away if it was the it right It would be great to do, do. one-off Christmas special, I think, but it would have to be so carefully written yeah. that it was true to what it was before, and I don't know, I mean... I suspect it will never happen because they've been talking about it for years and they've done all the others and I just think if they were going to do birds they would have done it by now and maybe it mm. is better left where it is but every time it's always being shown on television and everybody loves it and said when are you bringing it back and part of you thinks well maybe a one-off our Christmas special just to say goodbye just to, to it say forever. yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. you couldn't do another series that would be too much because we're all 10 years old and it's not the age thing even it's the magic of the time time have changed politically things have moved on yeah, yeah when you watch it back is it like watching two other people or is it are you still right back in that moment when you record me cry it? does it really yeah well, it does pauline texted me new year's eve this year she was in um, mallorca and she texts and just said just watched a christmas special of birds god we were good <laughs> <laughs> she loves watching them she yeah. sits watching them well that alchemy doesn't happen very often where you can put three actresses in a room and A, they don't kill each other and B, they get on and they have chemistry. I mean, it's so it rare. It's right place, it? right time, yeah. right mixture and you cannot, um, you know, you can't... I, 
we're always being asked what's the formula there, and is, there is no formula it was just you know everything was sort of it was a mixture said, it, it was, was right and I think that's where Morris and Lawrence were very clever that mm. they had the right idea Essex man white van man you know two people moving out the east end into Chigwell you know a bit of snobbery put the snob next door you know who actually needs them more than they need her and all of that mm. and a lot of pathos in it and a lot of people and also I think what you saw when you watched it were people who cared for each other and I think yeah. and the audience we cared we for that we weren't afraid not to be funny you no. know I mean, there was lots of episodes testicular cancer abortion you know things mm. that have been touched in sitcoms before that were dealt with in a really sort of respectful way but yeah. you know people loved it well I love you both and I love the programme and I can't wait to get the DVD I'm sorry this interview has been somewhat <laughs> surreal well it is somewhat <laughs> surreal and I'm going to have a nice lamb steak for lunch now I'm telling <laughs> Yeah, I'm You're going to hate this, by the way. I've just been in. There. They just took me into the cafe to give me a bacon sandwich. It actually came from one of the animals that was walking. Oh, oh, no, 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 that is wrong. That is so wrong. Oh, no. That's well wrong. Oh, Very fine. Did they tell you the name of the pig? No, no, no. Well, we just saw one called Vanessa, which was oh, uh, down there. Move on. Uh, listen, <laughs> I, I want to talk to you both about one thing. How do I get a dinner? Because I was trying to chat up Pauline Quirk last week. Can I get us all together for a dinner in Leeds? There's some really nice restaurants. I know you don't like going north of the Watford Gap, Linda, but if I were to pay for a cab or something could we get that together and, and just have a nice dinner together because I think you're all so wonderful that'd be fantastic actually I wouldn't it? mind that you'd have to send a, ch a chauffeur driven limousine <laughs> to take Linda and I up well, it'd have to be the best restaurant yeah. you could find yes and chauffeur Frankie and Benny's that's very posh up here <laughs> yes right. oh I don't mind wearing McDonald's wherever <laughs> and then uh, a limo to take us back and a five star hotel overnight you do that and you yeah. might just have a deal <laughs> fabulous listen I love you both very much uh, two unique actresses with uh, great comic timing and you can see that in the new DVD of Birds of a Feather, Linda Robson and Leslie Joseph. Thanks so much for coming on the Thank program. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye.